Hi, I'm Craig. I have been to the moon, if by moon I mean the burrito place down the street, and this is Mental Floss Video. Today I'm going to answer Ella Velton Luza's big question. Here's a question. Why the heck didn't we go again to the moon? I don't know. Oh, well, I do. I'm going to tell you. Let's get started. It's important to remember why people went to space in the first place because we're super competitive. The US and the Soviet Union had a space race, which lasted from about 1955 through 1972. Basically, after World War II, both countries wanted to prove that they had superior technology, and this was one way to do that. It was very intertwined with the arms race. In 1961, the Soviet Union sent Yuri Gagarin to space, and he orbited the Earth. The US needed to compete with that, so in 1966, NASA was given about 4.5% of the national budget, the highest percentage it's ever been. That was about $5.9 billion, which is like $43 billion today. And in 1969, the Apollo 11 landed on the moon. What up? We are up there on the moon. Well, not now, but we were then. Jumping ahead in time, the last moon landing so far happened in 1972 with the Apollo 17. On this mission, three men went to the moon, including the first astronaut scientist, whose name was Harrison Schmidt. Hey, I'm Harrison Schmidt. I'm an astronaut. And a scientist. They went to learn more about the moon's surface and take a bunch of samples of the material up there, like lunar rocks. And this was around when the space race ended. It was the same year of the first round of strategic arms limitation talks between the US and the Soviet Union. The countries agreed to begin limiting the number of nuclear missiles. Uncoincidentally, this was also when the US started losing interest in the space program. There was no longer a big competitive push. Well, Russia's not doing it, why should we do it? Who cares, right? Since then, no one's been willing to give NASA 4.5% of the national budget. Nowadays, they have around 0.5%, which means a mission to the moon isn't feasible. The whole thing is pretty political. Like in 2010, President Barack Obama laid out his vision for NASA's future, one that didn't involve moon landings. He said, uh, well, we've been there before. There's not a lot more space to explore. And countries all over the world are talking about it. It just hasn't happened. China's considering another moon mission, but it might not be until after 2020. And the Russians have plans for the 2030s. And technically, robots have been to the moon in the meantime. Sending humans into space is more difficult. You need food, waste recycling, oxygen, and a lot of other stuff that's heavy, along with the ever-present risks of something going wrong. And if I were going, you'd, you'd need like every video game system. You'd need a whole lot of burritos and uh, probably a masseuse, for sure, and um, beer. But most scientists agree that machines can only do so much, and future success requires humans. One analysis determined that in terms of dollars of scientific benefit versus program costs, human flights are actually cheaper than robots. One person who thinks we should go to the moon, Neil Armstrong. He has said, Americans have visited and examined six locations on Luna, varying in size from a suburban lot to a small township. That leaves more than 14 million square miles yet to explore. Thanks for watching Mental Floss, which was made with the help of all of these strategic arms limitation talkers. If you have a big question of your own that you'd like answered, leave it below in the comments. See you next time.